Oh yeah, about to get my cinema stash rehash on. <laughs> Let's go! Uh, what? Oh yeah. Podcasting from Chico, California, and home of the world's largest functional yo-yo. They are Cinema Stash Rehash. Join them as they talk movies, make fun of them, and discover how they fuel your everyday life paranoia. Let me welcome you to... And welcome to the fourth episode of Cinema Stash Rehash. I am Jason McLendon, and I'm here with Wyatt Campbell. What's up? And Chris Matson. Hello. And this episode's going to be on The Thing. The Thing. Yes. John Carpenter's. John, exactly. Brilliant. 1982. One of the most crazy special effects movie that I've probably ever seen. It was, it was gnarly at the time. Oh, it's gnarly it, it's, today. It's, like it's, it still holds up to this day. Basically, about a group of scientists in the middle of Antarctica that just encounter some amazing shit and they have to somehow somehow make it through by looking to a helicopter pilot <laughs> played by kurt russell who uh basically is just drinking the entire movie oh getting wasted and solving scientists problems for them in the arctic because oh. i mean am i the only one who's uh wondering why kurt russell is always relied on it's like let's see what mac thinks <laughs> It's true. He's the leader of the bunch. Because, of the bunch. I mean, we need the drunk helicopter pilot to fucking solve these problems. He, he was a leader before there was a leader. I mean, yeah. he was the leader. Even when Gary, I think his name was Gary. Gary? He was like, hey, Mac, I need to talk to you in the, uh, in the old. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's kind of funny because this, this station that they're at has the, this plethora of characters that, are, that all have certain you know, trades or specialties scientists i mean childs isn't a scientist but he's like security i don't know and then uh Nalls is the cook who's basically disco skating to stevie wonder while he cooks <laughs> exactly but most of them yeah i mean you know blair i think he's probably the biologist and there's doc who's actually a doc and you know it's helicopter pilot and yeah i mean he's, he's definitely a helicopter <laughs> pilot who wears like a yosemite sam hat <laughs> and likes to get drunk while it's, playing chess yeah but it's the it's the antarctica and you there's you know weird shit happens you wear weird shit and weird shit happens in antarctica you oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it, it, you know you know actually it, it's it's funny because you, you don't want to go to antarctica i mean i was in antarctica like maybe a, a few weeks ago and it's a place that you don't really want to go i I happened to uh, I happened upon this sushi restaurant and it was the worst experience of my life. Oh. Ah, welcome to Arctic Sushi, where we have the freshest ingredients in all Arctic. Please sit. Man, you guys are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Surprised you get any customers at all. What the hell was that? Nothing. Your ear. Play trick on you. What you have? Jesus Christ! See, it's fine. What I tell you? Very fresh. What the fuck is? Uh, what the what the fuck is that? Serious. No, no, no. See, a char broiled. See, very fresh. What the fuck is going on here, man? I got Moody Myrtle in the fucking kitchen, a burnt up man spider down there on the ground, and a Chinese guy at a fucking Japanese restaurant. What the fuck? You know what? Never mind. I don't even want to know. I'm fucking out of here. Holy shit. Okay, what on, on, on earth? Mm. So yeah, that that's that's kind of um... Jason. Wait, how do we know that you're you? Oh, what the? What the? What the, what the, what the, what the you see, what we're talking about here is an organism that imitates other life forms, and it imitates them perfectly. When this thing attacked our dogs, it tried to digest them, absorb them. 
and in the process shape its own cells to imitate them. Okay, what on, on earth? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what what the what the fuck happened? This place is a mess. Okay. Uh, Let's wonder- just talk about the movie. So the movie starts. <laughs> The movie starts out really strange. There's a helicopter shooting on a dog. This this is the worst stormtrooper <laughs> academy shooter I've ever seen in my life. He drops grenades. Like what on earth? I, 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 watching it, is, it through, it I, a shitty hunt. like watching it again. I, like I, I thought he was like guiding that dog towards the Americans or something. <laughs> like he was just a fucker that didn't yeah. like America. I don't because it was stupid. Just he was a terrible shot. I, I understand. It was we had the to worst that, shot. It was the entire. The premise was the dog bringing the th- the, the thing being the, the thing bringing. Yes. It. So I understand, but good lord, it was hard to watch <laughs> twenty minutes of this guy shooting. Totally. And the dog just like it's like the big ass smile on its face. Like oh man. I just wanted. And then once once the you know pilot or the copter lands and he shoots. Shoots him in the leg and shoots oh. doc with a doc. He shoots in the leg or uh, no? He no, shoots, he uh, shoots Fuchs. him. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fuchs, right? yeah, he shoots Fuchs in the leg. And then everyone gets down, and from there on out, it's just a it's just a slugger fest of what the fuck is going on in this movie. It, yeah, and and then also an introduction to uh, probably what is the best performance of the movie played by the dog. Sensational actor. <laughs> it was so. <laughs> His name was Jed. Jed. Yes. Jed, Jed played. I mean, Jed went all out, man. Method, yeah. method. Uh, he, Probably he, he was a scene stealer, especially in in the, in the beginning. Beautiful dog, and then like that scene where he's walking down the hall, and he like pretty much just looks totally like I, I you know I read that he never looked at the camera. Like that's why he no. was such a good dog actor is that he no. never looked at the camera. So it was like he just did his part. And uh, a really cool part about it is that uh, you know that. When the dog walks past and there's this shadow that goes like this or whatever and you can just see the shadow but like the same time like the whole time i've i've watched this movie like so many times and i'm sitting here going the whole time I'm like that shadow looks like nobody i know in this movie like nobody and it turns out that in the movie that he decided that it was one of the dog trainers yeah. that was in the movie that was ushering Jay. i heard it was john carpenter no he it was just one of the trainers then he oh, yeah. wanted that he wanted that shadow to be <laughs> somebody, somebody that you couldn't recognize. Basically, exactly. So where you're like, who the fuck is that? Because he yeah. doesn't look like anybody in the entire movie. So okay, so the movie from there goes to like, okay, so what the hell happened at the Norwegian station? Exactly. What the fuck? And uh, you know, I think it's kind of funny because Kurt Russell or Mac, we'll just call him. Yeah, Mac. Um, we all know he he becomes heavily. They become heavily dependent on his instincts in this situation because they keep relying on him later on for some reason but at the beginning of the movie he's kind of just portrayed as like either an ignorant idiot you know like idiot or he's just doesn't care and he's just like a smart ass you know like yeah. when, they, when they go to the norwegian station he's like come out sweden sweden it's norwegian Mac. And it's yeah. like <laughs> this is the guy that like within hours they're like mac what, what do we need to do and he's like <laughs> fucking we, uh, flamethrowers he's been drinking scotch like for yeah. hours you know he shouldn't even be in a helicopter which by the way when they get in the norwegian station that that's the first reveal of the practical makeups in this when you see the yeah the guy who s- throat slashed and the mm-hmm. blood is all frozen in icicles yep and just dripping down and frozen that way like at that point it's like whoa okay that's uh i remember seeing that when i was younger and just thinking geez that's crazy and i still thought that when i saw it the other night <laughs> it's, it's interesting the things you pull back from the movie because there's there's some crazy ass parts the part where the the thing comes out of the dog and his hands reach up to the ceiling and he, he yeah. creepily pulls himself into the air ducts yeah and then they just light that bitch on fire but that that dude's somewhere in the air ducts and it's like oh man oh, yeah. what a gnarly what a gnarly fucking thing that is i, I felt that that scene was i mean it was super awesome but at the same time it was it was hard to convey size so wait, are we talking the uh, when the dogs yeah the dog so thing. the dog splits his face well yeah everything. they put the they put the infected dog with it with the yeah. other dogs in the kiln and or a kennel or whatever and the other dogs know there's something up yeah like real soon well he starts to growl all weird and, and, and then his, his face, face splits open peels open yeah but then like as he's changing he's just like okay is he massive now or is he smaller now? But then like all of a sudden, like there's no, not much of a sense of scale. And then all of a sudden, like these hands just like come out of it like massively and it like 
breaks down the ceiling and it's just like I guess half of it goes away. And then there's like this spider tentacle thing just dangling in midair. And like yeah. the whole time I'm trying to like understand scale of this monster. And that was the only like little nitpicky thing that I had about it. I mean the and that that whole monster right there actually was developed by Stan Winston. Um, he it was the only part that Stan Winston did, but everything else was done by uh, Rob Botton. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and he he got a small uh, small credit, uh-huh. a thank you basically at the end of the film because he didn't want to take credit away from oh, yeah. him. So yeah. that was the only part. But it was like so hard for me for some reason to convey scale on how big he really was because like half of it just disappears, and the whole time it was just like. What was this? What was that? Yeah. Well, at the same time, I think that was a was it amazing. The whole scene, scene with the, was to be like, what the fuck is the, what? What is this? Because well, you, you hadn't seen anything beforehand, and all of a sudden, this thing is just blowing up, and you're like, what is happening? And I think it was more a sense of just what what is in this cell. Well, I mean, a, the, yeah. the, the the story is based on a novella called Who Goes There. Mm-hmm. And have you ever seen the original thing from outer space? Well, 1951. Yeah. No, I didn't. There's a. I mean, in that in that uh, version, they find him and bring him back in an ice block, and it's like a Frankenstein right. kind of thing. Yeah. And uh, they were kind of paying homage to that, I think, with the, the in the Norwegian base where they had like the big block of ice where like it originally had came come from. So. I know they've made a prequel originally, but I, you know, and I don't even think John Carpenter intentionally did this or whatever. But it seems like they're at least saying, "Hey, maybe after that original 1951 version," because the novella, I heard that the novella like uh, is close, or the, there's a lot more scenes from John Carpenter's that line up with the novella than the yeah. orig- than the 1951 version. He pays more homage to the the original, especially the hot needle scene. Mm-hmm. Which I guess is what John Carpenter, that's what sold him on the, the idea of doing exactly. it. Is like that, that hot needle scene in the book was yeah. good enough for him. Well, it, was, it, was, uh, it was interesting, too, because uh, in uh, the original the, the book, there was, there was no female actor also. But in the thing from another world, uh, the 1951 version, they, inst- oh, yeah, they, had a, they had a, female. a love interest, you know, yeah. in a female and uh, even in uh, John Carpenter's version, they had a female actress. They had one, and uh, fortunately, she was pregnant at the time. So they told her that you know, well, due to the harsh conditions or whatever, that yeah. you know, it might be. It's good better idea. off. I, I'm glad they, for for one, you know, for the first time in a long time, it was just guys and getting yeah. fucked up by a, you know, like it, it, I don't know. Yeah, it, I was it, thankful that there wasn't a woman, woman in it for the no, first time. I, I, in a long I think, made things simple. Yeah, it's simple. Well, yeah, it simplified things for sure. That's. But moving on with the with the uh, where this movie goes, like you know, they 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 torch that that uh, the thing when it does the meld with the dogs. Oh so yeah. They, so they have like a big corpse now, and uh, Blair Blair just goes ahead and you know does an autopsy, which uh, apparently like was so realistic practically on set that Wilford Brimley, the diabetes, the Will, diabetes. Will, uh, was like the only actor who wasn't really queasy with the idea of doing it because Ugh. he he I guess he had, he himself does some hunting or something. Yeah, like that. And they yeah. used actual animal organs for it too. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he was that? he was the biggest biggest seller of that being so gross though. He's been oh, in yeah. the background just vomiting and <laughs> coughing in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> it, looked, it looked gross. It must have smelled terrible. Oh uh, yeah. I imagine being in that situation though, like you're just out in the deep snow and. This and you're on top shit. seeing this thing that's infecting people, and, yeah. you know, like oh it's, god. it's like the most like horrific plot line. You're just like, oh my god, I, there's nothing that I can do for <clears throat> thousands of miles. You know, <laughs> it's like yeah, it's one of the, it's one of those scenarios though when you're sitting there and you're like, we're not going to survive this. Well, and then they like start inserting. They're the, the middle of nowhere, man. Yeah, they start inserting the uh, like the, the paranoia factor with. Um, you know, uh, I can't remember his name, but the guy that wanders outside and finds like the jacket, uh, the piece of um, Max uh, jacket, and then like the next time they find him, he's like all burned into the ground. Oh, the guy with the glasses. Yeah, Fuchs. Yeah, Fuchs. his name is Fuchs. Yeah, and, and pos- supposedly he lit himself on fire. Was that was that the story? Yeah, you know? they thought he like had dropped a flare or something himself, like that, right? and he yeah. burned himself or something like that. Yeah. So they start like you know making you think like, oh, okay, like. Who, like who who's either the psycho or infected yeah which almost like comes to a point where it's like how, how did you like you just forget that Kurt, he's like anybody could have shoved my jacket yeah, yeah, in that yeah. furnace anybody yeah 
Do I do a Kurt Russell impression? <laughs> <laughs> and then I, Richard, Richard Dreyfus just came out. Um, <laughs> yeah, Screw he, you! I was in Jaws. <laughs> he, he had he had his own cabin that the yeah. door was unlocked. Someone could have thrown his shit in the in. Yeah. But at the same time, it did it. It didn't. It didn't explain the the thing taking over people until Brimley did the sweet cam or the sweet uh, computer action with the. <laughs> Yeah. Cell going bloop, so, bleep, bleep, yeah. bleep, bloop, bleep. The, cool 80, the cool 80s graphics. Yeah, the 80s yeah. graphics. <laughs> like, so cool we didn't, we didn't really game, know that the, that the thing was the thing until that scene, right? Because that no. was... Because he does this, like, you know, he did the autopsy and everything, and then he comes back later after, like, doing some analysis or whatever and figures that, that it's just... And then Basically, go, his computer tells him that they're fucked if this thing gets yeah. off off of Antarctica. And so then they go in the helicopter. They go in the uh, ice thing and they talk, and then while they're talking, Windows watches that guy get eaten and then... And then shit goes down from there, right? Is that? Yeah. Well, <laughs> Windows is the first one. That- it's like it's pretty much shit goes down. Like since the dog opens its face, you know, <laughs> there's like, it's yeah. Well, they're all they're all they're all minds are their minds are blown at that point. Oh. But I, the the human paranoia of like who is infected doesn't happen until that. But <laughs> it's it's uh, I was just thinking of like Windows, he's. He's a mannequin. Did you know that? Because when he gets eaten later, like he's flopping around. Like oh, man. that. That windows. That was probably one of my favorite scenes. I hated how windows went out because because he was one of my favorite characters in that movie. Uh, he's, he's annoying. He he had like a Richard Dreyfuss voice to me as well. Yeah. He was, he was just, just paranoid, like a, man. He's uh, like in the middle of nowhere. He's like. Yeah. <laughs> The, oh, the whole scene is like he's just flopping around Gumby. I mean, it's he's, just like yeah. the most rubber it's band. It's by man. a mouth. It's just the mouth opens up after this guy's chest and just eats his face. Well, and well, then see, there's see a, a windows. Well, and then there's a, like, I mean, like, there's windows. And then the, that guy, Clark. Clark, yeah. The dog guy. The, doc, the dog dogs, guy, yeah. He, who, you know, like, I mean, for what it's worth, the guy isn't lying. Like, he was never, you know, he was never. He should just got murdered for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, he got murdered because he didn't trust Mac, which is probably <laughs> I wouldn't trust that guy either. If he's just his fucking shirt throw, shows up in the furnace, and oh, he man. comes in with a blowtorch, and he's like, "Stand back!" Yeah, when they when they left him outside, his he came in, and his face was just white and just scary looking, and he was yeah. probably the thing. I would have I would not trust that dude either. But he straight shot Clark Gregg in the face. He didn't totally. even, didn't think twice about it. Just yeah. badoosh. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, you, you're auto- automatically when you think about it, you're already automatically segregated because you know you. They they found him. You already they already think that he's the thing. So when he comes in there, he knows Anybody nobody trusts been... him immediately. So he's got what? So he grabs this big thing of TNT and he's got that flare. Yeah. He goes, "You you burn me, we all go up." <laughs> well, and yeah, so it's like they, he's, then he's <laughs> he, he's immediately in charge, you know. <laughs> so it didn't matter at that point. But then but then after they do all the blood tests and then uh, it's ruled that Palmer yeah. is infected. His fucking blowtorch doesn't work. So no, exactly. And he's just like, in like poop, poop, poop. childs, and uh, maybe somebody else was in the chair, like while Palmer's like morphing into the thing, and he's just like, oh, fucking tie me. And he's just like, <laughs> poof, 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 poof. <laughs> I'm just like, it's, nobody's gonna go untie this guy. He must be a real childs. Must be a real asshole. Yeah, yeah he like, was left there for sure. He was. He was kind of real. Asshole. He he was the only one that lived. So that's. Uh... Yeah, he's the only one that lived through it. I mean, I guess they didn't. For, for the most part, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm not and sure you have to take him not, for, take him at his word that he got lost in the storm because that's all he says. He's like, like Childs, you know, yeah. Max, like, where were you? And he's like, lost in the storm. And it's like, I thought I saw Blair. I would just like if I was Mac and I knew that like I wasn't infected, I would have probably just shot him. I'd have been like, how do I? How do I fucking know? Yeah. You know, how can you trust anybody? Where's your blood? Let's do this in the yeah. storm. Well, you know, and let's let's not forget. I mean, I love the fact that. Every time you see the thing, it involve it evolves in such a magnificent different way. Like first we have the dog. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's okay. Are you okay? Yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, hold it. Trying, hold it at bay. Hold it at bay. I was trying to. Yeah, no, hold, hold it at bay. Trying to burp, but yeah, we're trying to do this. <laughs> but no, it manifests in such different ways. You know the dog scene, and then we've got Norris. Which I actually thought, I mean, if you really think about this, Norris is an interesting guy. He was, he's the guy with the, the chest opening and his big teeth. Oh, yeah. He's the one that I think in the end changed at a, like a biological level. Like, totally. You know, because you can see his change like at the part where like, he goes, he was spider, ah. He was spider head, too, Yeah, right? he goes, ah. You know, like you can tell that he was changing from the inside. Yeah, he was Like the rest of them were probably yeah. like, you know, attacked and 
you know, got got it in some way. That whole scene, that's just like Rob Botten, you know, that's probably his like masterpiece, his Norris on the table. Oh man. Opening up like a freaking, you know, uh, what do you call him? Venus fly trap. Yeah. And then his and, head just falls yeah. backwards and slides off and then yeah. turns and, and runs away. It's like runs away and it's like <laughs> 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 what is you're all about the sound effects tonight. oh my god you love this the movie best. though was, yeah, dude. the spider the spider legs were crazy as shit I'm, I, I'm glad they looked back and saw that spider crawling away cause I was like what the fuck the whole fuck? time I was like please see it please see it yeah. but what the fuck cause like, okay they saw it oh yeah. my god well it's like I mean you're watching the whole thing and, and they're burning him on the table and his head is just like Detaching you know. itself yeah. and like just it's like running away. Yeah. <laughs> it's 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 like everything. Every time you see it, it changes and manifests in something oh, that's yeah. completely different. Like you're not you're surprised every time you see what's happening during this film. And you know it was like practical to the point where they probably heated up some sort of like makeup, you know, latex or whatever and had it literally like goop off of the you know, the 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 I Whatever. believe there was a lot of KY involved in this movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there had, there, had, yeah. There had to have been some anyways. Yeah. Mm. That was a big beer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh do, does, does anybody else not have a problem? I mean I guess it's you do what you gotta do, but they just locked Blair up in this little tiny room and said, Fuck you, Blair. Like we could all be affected infected, but I mean, I guess he did break the helicopter and try to try to stab somebody. So it was warranted, kind of. But was Blair's was Blair's logic sound? I mean, it might have been a little extreme. But let's say you are Blair and you're you're on this isolated station with something that, if you trust your computer, could could you know envelop the the Earth on its own, which is pretty crazy to think about anyway. But. I mean, is the logic like, hey, like, I'm not letting anybody off this. We're, we're like, we're all dying here. We're going to kill this thing. No fucking way. Like, anybody's surviving this. Yeah. I actually think that's, like, decent logic. I mean, I, you know, like, I like of course, I think there's, you know, like, hope for other things. But, like, if you were yeah. in a situation where it's, like, you or the world, you know, like. Well, it's, it's one of those facts that you know as a movie goer you want to see somebody survive usually yeah you know and this movie you yeah see. the the closing credits goes there's two people that survive but you know let's be honest the the fire is going to go out and they're going to either you're freeze sorry. to death or you know the the thing is one of them and they're going to freeze until mm-hmm. you know somebody comes and finds them so i mean with that you know this this is another it's a it's a suicide squad in the middle of you know you're you're it, for the better of the world, we've got to kill this thing, and we're yeah. not going to survive, so we got to do it. Yeah, that's why I'm saying, like, if I was Mac and I knew I wasn't, I would have killed fucking Childs when he showed up. <laughs> would have been like, "Hey, dude, boom!" Because <laughs> <Just pouring him laughs> up, right? <laughs> yeah. The weird thing with Blair is the timeline's kind of strange. When did Blair turn into the thing? Because he was obviously when, the thing at the end. Okay, so I think that's a good so question. It's too, been a while. He was up in that cabin, well, was so like, this, he, this, like, that's, that's actually so a great he, question. But he had to have broken the helicopter to get the pieces for his ship so he was a thing at that moment yeah. so there was more than one thing there was two things at the time because they because there was like five guys turning into things while blair was the thing so i was kind of confused yeah. on on was there can the can the thing take can, multiple bodies so it's so it could pretty soon well, we're just all conta- gonna... it just turns them it just can contaminate or contaminates and changes so, I mean, them or so it's not that's not the worst thing to ever happen you just turn into yourself and now you're the thing if we're all the things but we're ourselves i mean <laughs> that's just life right yeah, yeah. we could we be just things. continue it's not i'm not scared of that movie at all I just, hey, that wait. movie just blew my mind is this like the, is this like the matrix like, yeah we can, all be, yeah, we can all be things we don't wait even know it you mean we're not in pods somewhere no uh it's a true is story that, is that what it is Something that's, that's weird to put it that. I mean, if it's weird, if you think about it. Well, I, I think because you know, the time when they're cert- they're going out to Blair to give him the test. You mean the blood test? Yeah, the blood test. And yeah. they walk up to the door, and it's open. Yeah, that's what I think is when Blair was turned. Like some, because somebody had to open the door to go in because yeah, it was but, latched. But like Chris was saying, it was like when he, when did he fuck up the helicopter? Well, he fucked up the helicopter that was pretty soon. Like right pretty after, early. like right after you found exactly. out the, so the he, blood. He, so yeah, but like, he, he fucked up the helicopter and then he put the blade to the guy's, to the guy's neck or, well, or he was beating them, the computers when windows was, had blood on his face. Cause I mean like, so he was already turning into yeah, a thing was, at that moment. Cause he, he was, was, he was a his, thing. Like what was his, I mean, 
I never understood Blair's timeline. It well, just interesting the computer, the so, computer told told him that told him that um, this infection, if it were to reach a mainland, it would take like two thousand one hundred. What it was shortly uh, under like three years. Yeah. For total mass, yeah. you know, contamination. So once he reads that, he I think he kind of like flips a lid or something like that. Well, yeah, but but he, also I mean that's that's interesting too because it's like he's he's probably not a thing if if he I don't think at that point. That yeah, but way. how could he? He couldn't yeah. have started. Bu- he wouldn't have started building a spaceship if he wasn't the thing. That was well, he, his, was, he that didn't was start his building escape. it. I think until he was locked in there. Yeah, I, I don't know when he really changed. Because if he was the thing, he would so, he wouldn't be destroying. Was stuff. I was I wrong to was I wrong to assume that when he beat up the helicopter, he took apart. From the helicopter no, for I, a ship, I, he because no. at that I moment he, he would have been the thing building a ship. He would yeah. have taken. He would have. Oh, I agree. I, I, get, in, that. The, I get that. I get that. Yeah, in the movie, I just yeah. assumed he broke the helicopter because he didn't want them to leave. Because if that was the point of, that's we're all going to die. That's what I assume. But well, then, that, yeah, that's movies, what I thought too. Later in the movie, they yeah. say, "Oh, he got the helicopter and he put it. That's on a bitch. Put it on this and the tractor, spaceship." Yeah. So yeah. I never understood. How, I just didn't understand how long. Well, I, I think that's what it Yeah, I think that's what it was. It was that he didn't want anybody to leave the time, and I think. At that point, to when he went crazy, whoop, somehow he got turned. I love, I love the fact that Mac Mac never grew. Like there, there wasn't any growing in this movie. It was yeah. pretty much the thing came and then shit happened and they all like there was no growing. Mac started a dick. He ended a dick. They were all dicks. <laughs> yeah, one of my my favorite. He was Mac, like still drinking the same bottle of gin. Yeah, he was carrying it in his back pocket or something. My one of my favorite Mac quotes, just pretty much showing how much of a dick he was, is when he was playing chess with the computer. And then the computer beats him, and he he takes his drink and he pours it in the computer, and he's like, "Cheating bitch!" Yeah. I, was like, yeah. I was like, "He's such a dick!" Like, what a, no one's there. By the way, the only female on this yeah, uh, was the movie only was female the voice. voice right yeah. there, yeah. Adrian Barboa, which was his wife. That's crazy. That yeah. was whose wife? His, John, John Carpenter. John Carpenter. Yeah. yeah. No, but it's true though. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. It's I, like that's that's what I don't get. It's like Mac is an asshole. Sure, he's got experience in a helicopter in in, in Vietnam. That's probably why he wears that Yosemite Sam hat. But still, <laughs> what I'm wondering is, is, like, you've got a bunch of competent people that are literally all looking at him. Yeah, but what do you do in that moment? What do you do in that moment? I mean, you have to. You look at somebody. You know, looking at child. Child's a crazy. That's they kind of said that in the movie. Child is he didn't have any. He couldn't control oh, yeah. his temper or whatever, so they didn't go to Child's. Yeah, yeah. they weren't gonna go. They couldn't go to. Uh, the first the dog handler because he was obviously could have been the thing. Clark, so they, yeah, so yeah, they, they kind of went to Mac at first because they had to, and then and then Mac turned into maybe he could have been the thing, and they kind of turned on him until he did the blood test. Yeah, well, and and so they, the, it was kind of he was kind of like the the, the only benef- real the rational person. Yeah, who, who else for. who who else would have you have chosen? I mean, Blair was gone. The I don't know. I, I just think the it was, I just guy. thought it was a little silly that like. He was he was um, presented at the beginning like I was saying like you were saying like even I didn't mention that he was like an asshole but like just like a ignorant dumbass you know like Swedes Sweden you know and it's like <laughs> wait like who is this guy like why is he suddenly like a voice of reason when these people when like the the whole trip through the Norwegian thing they got the the guy that like goes Mariners. with them the guys. Doc I call him Doc <laughs> yeah yeah Doc it's basically I think his like, name is Copper kind of like. Right. Yeah, uh, you know, like whatever, Mac. Now they're Norwegian. You, you know, like kind of like you dumbass. <laughs> and, and, and Norwegians, I, not Swedes. But then, at the, you know, at the at the first sight of an incomprehensible danger, they're like, maybe because they're like, "Can you fly us out of here?" And he's like, "No, no." no well, at that point, you know, the the Norwegian camp is like the closest one. So it's like, you know, how far do you have to go to get somewhere else? Yeah, especially in a chopper. Um, well, actually, I mean, I have to bring up, you know, just because the the prequel movie, which oh, came yeah. out in 2011. I mean, I have to bring that up just just for a split second. And you guys, have you seen it before? I've seen it. Okay. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a great movie. I mean, I enjoyed it because, you know, if you watch it back to back, it's like one big movie. But it's really cool to kind of see how everything did kind of go down. And I loved seeing the one thing is that I love to see that I saw you saw what happened to the guy that you brought up earlier with the slit yeah. throat and that. I mean, it was fun being able to see all that. And my favorite part was actually seeing the two headed thing that they dissected. Oh yeah, you know the two headed guy, the joining of the two people. You know, I mean, it was cool to see because you know the thing it, they just it just does what it does, and it's like there's no rhyme or reason to how it does its thing. 
it's just it just transforms just, man yeah. it just it just does it, it, that's the, that's why it's so, this movie is so captivating is because you have never seen this kind of stuff on film before well and it doesn't to even me, like it was no it was new it was it doesn't, yeah like it's crazy like with the dogs too it's like it just turns into this like organism this mass organism that's like you know got its tendrils out and latches onto these other organisms and like assimilates yeah itself you know, or drags them in and turns it into like a big ball of like multiple organisms. Yeah. You know, it's it's weird. It, it makes no sense. Multiple orgasms. What did you say? <laughs> multiple <laughs> orgasms, Chris. Something you'd know nothing about. <laughs> no, you're right. <laughs> you're right, Sean. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Connery. <laughs> it came. No, it's cool. They you know they did they did a, they did things to the to the uh, crew like you know did you know they. Kept the set really cold. It was super cold. They kept them very yeah. uncomfortable. So they had that. that very uncomfortable mm-hmm. look to them. It was very realistic and believable. As they were filming in L.A. Yeah, they, I mean, they had to, they had, they had to do because, I mean, you, when you watched it, I mean, you, you, you felt cold. When, oh, he, yeah. when he came back in and his face was covered in ice coals and, and he looked purple, you, you felt he, had, he, had, he looked cold and you felt him being cold. Yeah. And that's cool. They did that a couple of different things. They didn't show the, they didn't tell the crew who the thing was at the time. So they kind of didn't, you know, kind of give, huh. give them a little bit of a reaction to Build it. Build the so, paranoia. Yeah, kind of. You know, they each they each had a little more paranoia than each. And yeah. obviously, if they if they were turning into the thing, like if they were splitting open and eating Windows face, <laughs> then they knew. But it was, it, you know, <laughs> just certain things like that always make it. It's kind of like a method acting type thing, and I always yeah. like to hear about it. It was it's it's a it's an interesting way to keep the, you know, the crew into the movie. I remember as a kid seeing this as a kid, I just loved the scene when uh, the guy who runs out into the snow and they all chase him down and he's like mid transformation. He's got Bennings. The, yeah, Bennings. Yeah. He's got the, the and windows. The two hands. It's windows. Yeah. He like comes in. He's like, it's Bennings. It's like, <laughs> that's all you have to say. Like, why don't you say like, Bennings is fucking transforming <laughs> yeah. into the thing. It's like, Bennings. Yeah. Everybody grab a blowtorch. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. Like when he's sitting there like, whoa. Exactly. Like I, I remember that. Like that strike struck some nostalgic memories for me. I was like, "Whoa! I remember that as a kid. That was haunting. That oh. was haunting. That's crazy." Well, this, 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 this movie. I mean, even it, it for me, the, the biggest scene ever is at the very end, and it's just massive. Do- I mean, the the floorboards. I remember they're, they're, they go down into Blair's thing. You know, yeah. they throw the dynamite down and destroy the spaceship, and then they go and find the generator. And he's like, "Where's the generator? It's, like, it's gone McCready <laughs> and then it's like after that it's like holy shit and this is massive like spur on the floor and then it's this huge 30 foot dog thing yeah. that actually took like 50 technicians to actually pull that scene off just to control every aspect of it because then the, the stomach opens up and there's this <laughs> baby dog yeah. inside his fucking belly you know and you're just like what the fuck just a bunch of little like yeah and it's just like dog. oh my god <laughs> That's what I mean. It's like every every time I was you just see like, there's it, people's hands in those dogs that are like, <laughs> yeah, those like Stranger Things coming on the wall. Yeah. Every time you see it, it's it's completely different, and that's the one of the best things I, I loved about it. It's like it was a little bit of similarities. Like it apparently likes spiders and it likes dog formations, yeah. you know. But I mean, because you know, there's reasons for that. It showed up as a dog, so it's got like that genetic makeup, probably, or something like that. I but. do wish they showed maybe like a picture in the end, in the end, or something. But they showed the actual ice block that came out and what was inside of it. Yeah, other than pretty cool, but to see what the thing actually looked like when it. But that's what the Earth. prequels. The prequel kind of showed does. a little bit of that so, too. I, I didn't remember it showed that. Yeah, yeah. I remember watching it, thinking, "I wish, I wish I could see what." It, the it shows like. what they had in that ice slab and yeah. like how they get it out. Because at the very, be the very beginning, it's just like a two-second blip of yeah. a spaceship. You don't know if that, it's crashing it, that, right now or if it crashed. Be, it didn't really explain that very yeah. well. And then he said something like, "I think Norris said something in the movie. like probably been in the ice for like two hundred fifty thousand years or something like that. Yeah. Hundred thousand years. But that's that's hundred thousand years. I'm buried, yeah." Oh, never mind. So I'm sorry about that. That's a note I took. I took one. <laughs> Fantastic. That was a great note. But at the same time, that was what really was great about the prequel film is that, you know, like I said, I mean, the, some of the special effects were good and some not so good. But it did really kind of answer some of those questions. You know, when they dug the slab out of the ice and they brought it there, they actually used... Because um, originally... The, it now. Yeah, the, stu- the studio denied um, them to make a sequel to the thing because they thought that John Carpenter's film was a masterpiece in their mm-hmm. mind but they did go green light a you know a prequel film and so with that said it's like it was cool to be able to see all that and they used uh, kurt russell's scale of his, yeah. of his physique to be able to build the set 
exactly for the Norwegian camp because every all they all oh, had yeah. was still That's shots true. of oh, right. the Norwegian camp. A couple still shots here and there, so they had to use his and how high and how big to build the set to make. So this they actually work. go back to the same it's, it's set in the same area. Same, same time. Yeah, it same starts time. off when they find that spaceship you know like yeah oh so like, it's so it's a pre you said it's a prequel it's literally yeah. a prequel. i've seen it's, it but i don't it's, it's at the same time and then the dog that's what the best part i love about the yeah, end credits scene with the dog the dog oh, it does okay it so it's ends like with Rogue, the dog. Rogue One. yeah and the guy jumps into the helicopter with this dude that just shows up randomly he's like what the fuck happened and he's like chase that fucking dog and they get in the helicopter and they start chasing this dog yeah and that's the way the movie ends oh, and during cool. the credit scene it's showing them chasing this dog shooting it and that's how We'll see. It would make, it would, it would make, does it explain why you're such a fucking terrible shot? No, it does not. Because he was <laughs> okay. a terrible shot in the prequel film. But too. they're scientists. <laughs> okay, okay. I think, the, I think I he's a knew. scientist. So I never knew. That could explain it. They research. They don't shoot. So John Carp- Carpenter considers this movie uh, uh, part of his trilogy of apocalypse movies. Okay. And this movie uh, followed by Prince of Darkness, which I've never seen. I haven't seen that one either. But... The third one is a movie that I want you to see that I keep talking about, and I thought it was oh, Wes Craven, but it's John Carpenter's uh, uh, In the Mouth of Madness. I've heard of the movie, but I've never seen it. Yeah, I know, I know. And in the, this is a movie we're going to do eventually because okay. it's totally <laughs> a podcastable movie. Oh, perfect. But, yeah, it's it, it made me like go like, oh, shit, okay, now it's like I can tie it into the... the like, I didn't know John. We like Prince Darkness. I don't even know what that is. But yeah, John Carpenter yeah. didn't film the prequel. No, right? No, 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 no. Because no. there's, I mean, the the novella um, doesn't really explain. I don't even think the prequel is based on the novella. I think it's just like the prequels taking what the fifty one version did and then what the one did. Uh, gotcha. Right. John, John Carpenter's and kind of just putting the pieces together. Like he did a great job. I mean, yeah. this this movie was one of my. It's it's still. I mean, this movie, all it does is pretty much just captivate you and scare the shit out of you. It's rated one of the like you know the top. And it like scares the shit out of you in a way movies. where you're like, okay, well, I'm not on Antarctica. <laughs> you know, like I don't think I have to worry about these being in my closet. <laughs> it's, it's funny actually. Um, this movie has become part of like uh, the cultural culture in Antarctica. Oh yeah, that, like all all the. Uh, Antarctic expeditions that are out there right now or whatever it's a tradition they always watch it huh all the time uh, you know that's not so it's like it's like watching a, it's like, a why? airplane crash movie on the airplane like, yeah, like why would you do <laughs> shit like that i'm out in the middle of the snow i don't want to watch something and i'd be i'm that kind of guy that i'd be like going fuck i don't i don't want to watch this shit out here because you know oh, now i'm like looking at the guy that's sleeping you know two beds down like mm, it's fuck? like watching <laughs> titanic on a cruise yeah you, you don't that's like that's like you don't do that shit <laughs> well it made me it made me hate dogs so no that's not true. That's <laughs> it made me feel sorry for dogs but it also made me uh realize that it's like you know if you do if you are in a situation like that like you kind of just have to say you know fuck it man like if I die, then at least I go out killing a little bit of this alien. That was kind of that was probably many. the most depressing part. Is they they finally figured out that the alien's not trying to do anything now. He just wants to go back to Frozen until someone comes yeah. and get you know. So it's pretty much well, we're fucked. So yeah, yeah, that's thanks, what I mean. Thanks it's for like the happiness the, and the prospects are you know like grim. Maybe that's why it's like they just sat outside child's and the M- only place the fire yeah. is, is, is the, probably the hottest place around <laughs> yeah. pretty pretty much his main mission is just to survive and you know he just wants to get somewhere else or she or it what, what the fuck would you call that but that's the it's the main mission it gets frozen it wants to get somewhere else mm-hmm. and it knows it can't so yeah it just wants to go back to sleep and wait for the rescue team dang I really want to go home and watch the prequel now <laughs> um, you know actually so we do this. We've been doing this once a week, uh, once a once a podcast, and I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch up a little bit. We have we have a little fan base now, and they've been throwing out questions. And I thought, you know, let's. I thought it'd be fun to kind of switch it up and maybe bring Alan Alan out, uh, Mr. Ald out of the cupboard, and and see if we can do a a question from a fan. We have we've had some pretty pretty cool, my pretty cool ride-ins, and I was gonna give it a try. So let's get Alan out, out, out here. Alan, you in there? Hey Chris, how's right. it going? Hey, hey, it's going good. I, you know, I usually I ask you the questions. I get frustrated pretty quick, um, and I'm gonna so I'm gonna yeah, step back. You gotta back. be patient, kind of like I'm, how I have patience. 
No, I know you're you're patient, man. I'm just gonna step back a oh, little no, bit. No, I mean I have patience. Uh, oh, they're I hear sick. You're saying, okay, sick, I get Chris. you back. Okay, back in numb. Uh, some all of them right, have so, injuries too. All right, so I have a little production here. We're gonna do it. It's gonna be uh, Ask Alan Alda. Yeah, all right, it's me. All right, we have a uh, our first question for Alan. It comes from Karen in Idaho. Karen, uh, I know. We're gonna say thank you for uh, to Karen for listening. And the question for you, Alan, is. Alan, do you like dogs? And if so, what is your favorite breed? Dogs? Dogs are, you know, they're considered man's best <laughs> friend. I've owned a few in my life. Uh, there was a few wild dogs that ended up on the set uh, when we were in, in Nam, And uh, some of the locals, I don't want to stereotype, but they threatened to put these dogs through uh I, there's a ritual there i don't want to get too much into it but you know i mean uh, yes i've owned a few dogs dogs are great my favorite breed uh i i, I do like um uh, i like a dalmatian but you know uh to be honest with you picking a breed of dog is is kind of hard not to not it's not to, it's kind of hard not to think about the, the the days when people were picking breeds based on their flavor chris you enjoy you enjoy the flavor of dog well, I, I've been I've been known to indulge in some ethnic uh, foods, Chris, but uh, I did not I, I, I didn't find it. Uh... Okay, so just to interrupt you, the answer to your question, Karen, is he loves to eat dogs, and we're gonna leave it at that. Hey, thanks, Alan. Thanks for coming out. Anytime, guys. Right. <laughs> okay, I guess we're gonna close out this episode with the dirty minute, and we'll see you next time with. The Burbs. Oh, yeah, dude. Fucking the funniest Tom Hanks movie you've ever seen. I still haven't seen it, so it's it's going to be a fun watch. I am looking forward to that shit like no other, so let's do this. Okay, we'll see you guys next time. All right, bye-bye. Bye. So fuck me if I'm wrong, but dinosaurs exist, right? Oh, my God. So, no? Okay. Yep. Okay. So, let's have breakfast together tomorrow. Shall I call you or nudge you? Wow. Fucking stupid. Yeah, well, at least I'm... uh, uh, You're gone. (sighs) So my magic watch says you aren't wearing any panties. Oh, you are? It must be an hour fast. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look at this. You're laughing. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Whoa! This, this, what? This is getting it's getting kind of ridiculous. You you don't need to still be laughing right now. I'm starting to. Feel, we, come, all right. Are right, your pet? Fine. <laughs> what an idiot! Hey everyone, thanks for listening to Cinema Stash Rehash. Be sure to give us some awesome iTunes reviews, like us on Facebook, don't forget to check out past episodes, and join us next time on Cinema Stash Rehash. 